Hey everyone, I, uh, it's Sunday night, I think, or whenever you're watching, you're gonna get to walk around with me just for a minute. This is your new church, church. Not quite done yet. In a week, next, uh, I think Friday night, we're gonna have a prayer meeting right down here. It's not quite totally done in here. We're going to have a prayer meeting at the altar. Um, the new paint's starting to go on. New floors are going in soon. Those are the new LED lights up there. I know this sounds strange. I think Friday night, Lord willing, you and the leaders and the people of the church, if you'd like to come in here, we're going to have a prayer meeting right up there at the altar. We're going to be socially distanced but we are here to serve the Lord. That's the balcony underneath right here. It's all new, looks totally different. And um, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna show you when we had this leak right there where those doors are, that whole part of the ceiling right in here was gone. It uh, came in. So this is a brand new building and uh, we uh, no, the Lord is very gracious with us. And uh, no one could come in here until this week because uh, the whole building was scaffolding. It was too dangerous to come in. There's just one tiny piece of it right there left. And that went all the way to the roof, that entire roof right there. The whole thing is brand new, the balcony, everything. The foyer will be done in about a week. The Bible um, says... And there's a couple of scriptures I want to look at as you just thought I'd show people around. I want to encourage you to pray. In the upcoming weeks, I'm talking just kind of like a friend here. Uh, next Friday night, hopefully, we'll announce. We're going to have some times of fellowship out in the parking lot. Uh, about five more groups are starting up. Uh, I'll be meeting people if on... Uh, for all the young men, the guys, the young dads, well, we're gonna announce, we're gonna have some get together times here at the church on lawn chairs, not even gonna come in the building, it's still warm out. Um, been meeting some people and they're like, we really need to get together. It's pretty tough, like we need to hang out. So uh, emails are gonna come out this week about on site and online opportunities of ministry. And so I'm very excited about the things that are happening. This is a message tonight. I'm just gonna highlight a couple things. I want everybody to kind of hear this. Uh, right here, this is the altar. And uh, before we put the new carpet down, I'd love it if people would come in here, if they feel they are comfortable with a mask on, we're gonna pray before they finish this place. I'm not really rededicating it, but just pray. Um, the Lord has been really gracious to us. Um, imagine the timing of this and we're getting a brand new building to come back when we all get back uh, we'll all enjoy it those that come back right away I know there's some in the parking lots already the government tells us it's much safer to sing outside most people in our church uh, as a matter of fact every person I've really asked and we've tried to ask as many as possible said let's just keep doing our parking lot service outside in a few weeks we might come in Pastor Bob will be preaching on Thursday mornings, his sermon that he plays in the morning, he'll be preaching it in-house. If you'd like to come, it's at 10 o'clock, it'll be every uh, Thursday as long as we're allowed. At 10, Pastor will preach in person and there'll be a live studio audience. But uh, two things I wanna mention. Number one, uh, we really need to keep uh, in our hearts praying. I think for about the first two months, of COVID, people really held together and prayed. But I've noticed in the last month, you can kind of feel it. People, the praying is waning. It, it, it's, it's the warring of what's going on in society, the worry or whatever it is. I'm not sure I can put my finger on it all. We, we, we need to pray. So we may, maybe wanna just pick it up in our own minds and say, yeah, I really need to keep praying. I think that praying right now is probably the most important thing you can do uh, maintaining unity and the message I preached this morning was very important in the sense that uh, Elisha asked when he was surrounded by an army that came to get him his servant was terrified and said 
what do we do? There's an army, we're captured. And they were in the city and Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. And then he saw the armies, the chariots and horses of Israel. We need to open our eyes. We are getting afraid. And it's having, it's gonna have a lasting impact if we don't pray and believe. People are gonna, get, you know, people are hurt and I get it and that's not wrong. And, hard to be happy right now but boy i'll tell you if we call out to the lord this can be a good time this can be a time where if you know people are like how do i make it right now what do you mean by pray we need to pray i mean we literally need to call out to the lord call out to the lord for your family teach your kids how to call out to the lord elizabeth came back from haiti a few years ago they were on like kind of the day that uh, Haiti was shut down, there was a coup and riots. Our team that was there, she was doing some medical work, they flew back and just made it out like on one of the last flights on the last day, who knew? Didn't get stranded, but when they came back, she said something to me. She said, uh, she was in a church like this. I'm just gonna tell you a little story, similar church size to ours. Haiti had a terrible earthquake that devastated the country. And um, right before the earthquake, the pastor of the church in Haiti, and uh, this is, you know, some people have a hard time hearing these types of stories, but this, is, this happened. Everybody in Haiti knows it's true. Church about the size of ours, and the pastor, everything in Haiti was made of cement block, essentially, even the big churches, the big buildings. And the Lord spoke to the pastor and said, build this church with a steel reinforced roof. People were very critical of him saying, why would you do that? And he said, the Lord told me to do it, but it's so expensive, like Haiti's so poor. And just shortly thereafter, that church was finished, that earthquake hit, and that church was one of the only things that stood in that country. Nothing fell in that church because that man was faithful. Just remember that even in the building, this building, God, buildings sometimes, God does things with buildings. He did it with that man because that man was faithful. That man followed what God told him to do because he prayed and God told him to build a steel reinforced roof in a place they'd never had a major earthquake in their history. That roof stood, and when everything else fell, that pastor found his church stood. And I think 20,000 people fled to the church and lived on the property because it was one of the few places that were safe for months. Buildings matter. Prayer can tell you how to build a building in a pandemic. And God can guide you through. And just remember that just like that man in Haiti who prayed, we need to pray. God knows what's coming. God knew the pandemic was coming. He timed shutting. This, this church would have been shut down, but God knew. He gave us a new church, a whole new roof, balcony, everything. God knew, just like he knew in Haiti. And let God guard your heart that God knows what's going on inside of you. Pray. Ask God to open your eyes. See what God wants you to see. And please listen to me. It's very important, I think, that we all really keep holding on to prayer. This is more of a talk tonight. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and come and heal their land. Guys, we're all cooked if that doesn't happen. If we call, and, and, and so I bring up Haiti, why? Well, Paul, you're talking about the building. That's not what Elizabeth told me. She told me that, but she told me one other story. She said, we think we gave them something. She said, but we didn't, they gave us something. She said, Paul, I went into this church where the people walked out of tin shacks with nothing dressed beautifully with great honor and dignity, the people of Haiti. And she said, I went to church and every Sunday at five in the morning, they have prayer meeting and the whole church is packed at five in the morning. 
And she said, I went into the Sunday school rooms and she said, 200 kids calling out on God. She said, like, I've almost never heard adults do in Canada. And that was a normal Sunday. And she said, if you want to know why those churches and places like that are having revival, she said, I can tell you when kids in grade four are calling out on the Lord. You see, we, have, we, can, we can choose to teach our kids how to call out on the Lord right now. What do you do with all your time right now? Now, that's not a rebuke. This is just saying, I think we're in trouble in our world now, and I think our countries are in trouble. And people are like, oh, it'll get better when the vaccine comes, and you know, what, a year from now, six months? We, we, what am I doing with my time? I need to pray. I need to call on the Lord. As I close, um, and we're talking about calling on the Lord, I looked at Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 6. And I want to end on this note. Elijah was surrounded and his servant by the uh, king of Syria. And Elijah prayed and the eyes of the servant were opened and he saw the armies and uh, the chariots and horsemen of fire, which are the armies of Israel. I guess the point to the whole story was they were not captured. And I would say that I think if we pray, we will not be captured. If we trust in the arm of flesh, I don't think we're going to make it. Our families won't make it. Our friends won't make it. Our kids won't make it. Our relationships. I mean, maybe we'll dart over here, we'll dart over there, but there'll be real damage that will be done. But I think if we pray, God can guide us and we won't be captured. Would you agree with me? I don't want to be captured. Do you? I don't. Let's go forward and let's not get captured. Let's call out on the Lord while we can. And like Elijah, God will provide a way. The Bible gives me a closing scripture that comes to mind. Is that God will, when things get bad, God will always provide a way out. And I think our way out of this, according to the Bible, is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will heal from heaven and come and heal their land. Let's hum just humble our hearts. It's all we can do, and we can pray, and then we won't be captured. COVID doesn't have to capture you. Anger doesn't have to capture your heart. Fear doesn't have to last. Frustration doesn't have to turn into rage. And love can grow instead of grow cold. God, let our love become fervent for our friends, for our family, for our fellow human beings, for our church family. God, let me feel hope in my heart. God, if I fall on my knees and pray, then let's do it. God, let's just do it. Will you commit with me? It's just a call to prayer. God, go for us. We know you're not against us, Lord. In Jesus' name, let's church rise up. Let's pray. Let's battle back. Elijah and his servant were not captured. Neither do you have to be. Neither do I. Do I need to do it? No. God does it. We just have to pray. Humble ourselves. We need to hear from heaven. And let God guide us through this really tough day. In Jesus' name, I proclaim victory. Amen.